and ready to run again for her country in this first heat of the women's 4x400 metre relay. First three in each heat, by the way, go through to tomorrow's final, and there are two spots left, two lanes left, uh, set on time. So, uh, Sonia, she is running. Alison is running second, uh, which is exactly where she ran in the, in the mixed relay to kick these world championships off. Yeah, very familiar leg for her. Nine out of ten times when you see Alison Felix on the 4x4 team, she's handling the second leg. She's searching for her 20th world championship medal. If Team USA is able to get through these heats, which we expect them to handle you know, very easily, she can be getting her 20th medal. Ado, I'm asking you to look into the crystal ball and you don't necessarily know, but there are rotations allowed in this relay format. Do you expect, if she runs well here, do you expect that we get to see Alison again in the final? No question about it. Why wouldn't you? She ran 50.1 in the mixed relay. She's gone home, had a little bit of rest. If she comes back here and she runs something under 50, it'd be very, very hard to yeah. keep her off of the final four. Put her in. And with the new rules, you can actually switch all four legs. So previously, you could only make two substitutions, but now with the possibility of switching all four legs, we might see a whole new team. We might see Allison. I think the woman on your screen here, Talitha Diggs, should be in that final group. But they just have so much depth. Sydney McLaughlin, a thing mobile. A thing mobile we ran the 800 on that day. So she probably will not be eligible, but so much depth. Uh, for this team, but we'll see what they do on this first round, and everybody's going to be running fast because they want to be on the final. Yes, yes. It's Talitha Diggs. She will kick it off. Here is Team Great Britain and Northern Ireland Lane 1. They have been the model of consistency on the podium for second, seven consecutive world championships, and then they got fourth in Doha, so they're trying to start another streak here. They were fifth at the Tokyo Games after winning the bronze in 2016 in Rio. And let's keep an eye on France as well. Lacoste will run the start leg. Their best finish was third. That was back in 2013 in Moscow. They missed the finals of the 2019 Worlds after making the finals three straight times from 2013 to 2017. And they missed the final in the Tokyo Olympics as well. All right, let's start out wide and work our way in Switzerland, you'll see in lane eight, when the gun goes off, it'll be on the far right-hand side of your screen, Ukraine. The Netherlands, who ran so well in the mixed 4x4, with Fem Cabal running the anchor leg to give the Netherlands the silver in the mixed 4x4, only the third time that had been run at a global championship. South Africa starts in lane five, and then Germany in lane four. Keep an eye out for when France has been at Oregon, so she gets to represent her country on the track on which trains daily. I gotta say this was always the highlight of major competitions for me. It's like it's so intense, it's so individual up until this moment when you get to walk out here with three teammates like-minded individuals who you know have worked so hard to be here to have that USA across your chest or any country, the country that you're representing it just means so much and you know they're all very intense right now, very focused but they're having fun down there. This is a great moment for all of these athletes get to represent their countries in this event. And Lee, we talked about this in the 4x1. Track and field is such an individual sport that the relays are a unique opportunity to watch teams get together with a common goal. Well, it's always so much work, you know, where you see not necessarily the animosity, but just the intense competition. It's lovely to see whether it's the women or the guys at the end of their race embrace, come together, run for one, run for their country as a team. And to see the crowds this early, I they are already packing the stands. I think that the buzz in the city has just been on a, the next level. Like, you can't find tickets. People call in wanting to be here. It's like the place to be. And, you know, for the athletes, even in a preliminary round, to have this kind of support. Yeah, people calling for tickets. They're all calling me. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the ovation there for Team USA. Yeah, everyone's just excited to be here. Well, when we watch the replays of whether it be Noah Lyles uh, win, breaking Michael Johnson's 26-year-old American record, Sydney McLaughlin last night, whatever it was, some of those big moments in the field as well, just the roar from the crowd, and, and it's helped the athletes because they feel like it's normal again. After two years of odd meets yeah. dealing with the global pandemic, they feel like it's back, it's back to normal. So US and NCAA champion Talitha Diggs of Florida will lead off for Team USA in this, the first heat of the women's 4x4 here at the Eugene World Championship. 
Oops. First heat of the women's 4x400 metre relay. Team USA in lane two, Talitha Diggs. I like that they've chosen her to handle first leg duty. She's the NCAA champion and the US champion. She ran well here, eliminating the semifinal after a long season. But when you put that stick in a corner miler's hand, they forget all about the previous races. They're usually able to execute a perfect race. And there she is already making up the stagger on France. Yeah, they're big staggers in this race. So you see Talitha Dix has made up the stagger, but so has Germany in lane four. Switzerland's doing well with Silke Lemons leading the way. Right there in the red. Look at that finish from Dix. She's bringing the wow. stick into Allison Felix. You can tell who has had the best leg based on the exchange. Yeah. No doubt about it. Talitha Dix with the best close. Listen to that roar. That's for Allison Felix. And if this is her very last trip around any oval at the World Championships, she's going to favor this one. And that was exactly how you execute the first 50 when you get the stick first. You want to separate because the incoming runner hasn't gotten the stick yet, so you're able to really take advantage of the outgoing runner not having left the, gotten the baton. So this is a great run right now, Otto. She's really holding on to this lead well for Team USA. Nobody runs like Allison Felix. We're going to miss that very distinct style. As Allison gets ready to hand over to Kaylin Whitney. There's Kaylin standing by. US has got the stick. Oh, and a drop. A drop from the Netherlands. 50.7 for Allison Felix on her second leg. The United States with a lead of just over five meters. Victoria Uhuragu is chasing Kaylin Whitney down. It's the U.S. and Team GB. Kaylin Whitney won goal with Team USA in Tokyo. She was on the prelims, just like she is here. So she's used to this. Kaylin Whitney, who stepped up from the one and two, had a lot of success on the junior level. I think she's finally found her best event. Running pretty well here again for Team USA. Ukraine is making a comeback in the hands of Victoria Kachuk. They're running into third at the moment. They're running very strong. Not quite third yet. Still behind Switzerland. So as they hand off to the anchors, this will be Whitney to Stepter Baines. And Stepter Baines, who ran the 400-meter hurdles prior to stepping over to the 400, has been running really well this year. But look at Great Britain right behind them. Jergen doing a great job to stay right within pace with her. What you don't want to do on the anchor leg when you get a lead is to blow it, is to get out too fast and not have your legs coming home. So she wants to kind of back off just a little bit to ensure that she has her legs coming home, but top two make it through. So either way, Team USA is safe. Anna Rizakova of Ukraine got herself in the third, but then she's just been overtaken as well. It's Team USA and Team Great Britain. Top three go straight through to tomorrow's final. And tremendous effort by Jade Steptevanes. Gets the win for the US. Over Nicole Jürgen. And Femke Bull, the silver medalist in the 400 hurdles, puts together another masterful anchor leg. You saw the Netherlands put the stick on the ground. Didn't matter, Femke Bull still got it. She is the rescue specialist. <laughs> she is incredible. And I'm sure she had to be thinking, really, guys? <laughs> the sticks on the ground have to work even harder to get us into that third spot. But she did it. So Great Britain, Dutch, and the United States from this first heat. So rare that you see a baton fall in the 4x4. Four four. Obviously, it happens a lot in the 4x1s because of those blind handoffs. But in the 4x4, four four, you get to look and get the handoff, a visible handoff, and usually they can just drive right into your hand. There was a lot going on, so we weren't able to see exactly what happened there with the Netherlands, but a real shock for them. But like you said, Femke Bowles to the rescue, and they have an automatic qualifier into the final. When I saw the Netherlands bobble the stick and then drop it, I thought, well, Femke Bowles won't be able to use her magic to come back because they're gonna be so far behind. Well, <laughs> she did. showed me. She did again, and she ran them down in the mix four by four. Here, here is the incident and the moment where the Netherlands dropped it. So that's just a question of taking your eye off the baton before it is securely in your hand. Every coach at every level has said this 10,000 times.
times, and yet you see pros come out here, and the the excitement of the moment oh, overwhelms yeah. them, and they forget the basics. That's a basic rule. But good for her. She got right to the ground, picked it up, and kept moving, and they were still able to get in. This is Scepter Bain finishing off her Team USA. All the ladies ran about 50 seconds.